go and do the challenging things that actually get you to your goal. Not just random challenging shit. Half of these fucking workout videos, just random nonsense that's hard. Ugh. Hey, I'm Dr. Mike Isratel for Renaissance Periodization, and I'm the creator of the RPI Hypertrophy app. I'm a professor of exercise and sports science at Lehman College in the Bronx, and I will be looking at a workout video today of Mr. Henry Cavill. I think it's Cavill, that's how I say it, and he's training for The Witcher. Let's put some sports science criticism in, and by the way, it's all jokes and all banter, no offense meant. Let's get it started. By the way, I've seen every single episode of The Witcher. My wife and I loved it. Hi everyone, I'm Henry Cavill and I play Jesus Geralt Christ. You know, I wake up every day and I tell myself I'm the straightest man that's ever been born. And it's all lies. Henry Cavill, my God. My God, man. I don't even know what my name is. Swoon. Morning, I started with fasted cardio and then I did a weight training regime. In the United States, it's programmed. In the United Kingdom, it's regime. My word. How fancy. This is my trainer, Dave Rienzi. Dave looks like he trains, bro. Maybe this will finally be good. And really, with all the stunt work he's doing, the key foundation movement we're going to incorporate is the Romanian death. That guy's not British. What the f*** is going on? He's doing a four-second negative with this, and then a two-second pause at the bottom. So far, I like it. Checking all the boxes. And the whole key here is just maximizing time under tension. So he's able to fatigue the muscles more, but not overstress his nervous system and his adrenals. What they're talking about is the level of systemic fatigue an exercise imposes, and the stiff-legged, aka Romanian deadlift, same thing. Uh, this is one of the most fatiguing exercises you can do. If you really wanted to train the glutes and hams, there's a bunch of exercises like leg curls and lunges you could do to get just as much hypertrophic effect, muscle growth, and uh, not nearly as much fatigue. So curious, but uh, uh, as an aside, me being really pedantic. I have him utilize a, a hip circle above his knees. So basically with incorporating that, he's activating his glute medius and really keeping the glutes activated and fired the whole time. Yeah, that's cool. Mind you, if you're doing it with a stiff knee, you end up mostly training the hamstrings just a little bit, the glutes, but uh, whatever. Uh, good stuff. Keep your core tight. Thanks, men's health. So the next exercise we're utilizing here is a hyperextension. Two back-to-back -back hamstring exercises, and both of them hip hinge, eccentric, heavy. Some redundancy, me being pedantic, his technique actually looks very good. When it comes to the posterior chain and uh, the kind of stunts I have to do, anything which is based upon one leg movement where a knee can have a bad injury if you don't have that glute medialis engaged or that posterior chain, this stuff is what saves me. This exercise is good for making you generally strong and will reduce your general injury risk if you are a stunt person. The logic there specifically wasn't that great, but uh, gee whiz, you know, so far we've done a few of these. The best video in a while that I've seen for celebrity training. Pausing at the top for two seconds is cool. Unfortunately, it's the least muscle growth prone position of the entire movement, so you're wasting a lot of energy. It can help you get a better mind-muscle connection with your glutes, but uh, again, this is mostly a hamstring exercise anyway, so I digress. Ooh, obliques time, a muscle you almost certainly never need to train. With this especially, this helps with one, endurance when I have to do a fight scene over and over and over again with a sword. If I'm using the real sword, real weighted sword, it's very heavy and requires lots of endurance to do the move. If you really wanted to train for endurance with a sword, you would instead use something that has gravitational weight, which means a dumbbell that you can grip like this, and then you can do lots of movements like this to build up endurance. You can hold it out for a while. That's really good. You can hold it at multiple different positions. That's really good. And you can actually do dynamic work with a progressively heavier dumbbell or for longer periods of time. And then eventually that makes you really good at lifting the sword. Using a cable machine with this baffles the fucking imagination. Uh, Men's Health says, keep your hands directly in front of the middle of your chest. Uh, for what? I don't, I don't know. This movement can be made in every way better by making it dynamic, stepping forward and then rocking back from here all the way to the end and slow and controlled with lots of weight for sets of 10 to 20 reps. You will get bigger, all sorts of core muscles and your ability to swing a sword will improve, you know, by you swinging weight around instead of just fucking standing there. This really did start off good. So far, not so great. For more challenge, do this in a kneeling stance. Why would it be more challenging? 
because you physically can't use your feet to grip on the floor, making you weaker in the exercise without actually challenging you? Yes. Guys, listen. Uh. Do not go to the gym to get a challenge. You can challenge yourself anywhere. Do your taxes. That's hard. Challenges should have a purpose. You want a challenge to make you more mobile. You want a challenge to make you stronger. You want a challenge to make you grow more muscle. Figure out how you want to challenge yourself and go and do the challenging things that actually get you to your goal. Not just random challenging shit. Half of these fucking workout videos, just random nonsense that's hard. Shoulders, finally, a relevant muscle group. Here is a variation of side laterals and front raises. So each repetition is actually three repetitions. He's starting out in a traditional side lateral for the first rep, then he's coming a little further forward for the next one, and then- Everyone gets fancy all the time. Why do none of these Hollywood trainers just do fucking basic exercise? It works better than everything. It's a fine exercise, needlessly complex. I would like a lifter to focus on one or two movements at a time, probably just one. And when finished with one movement, go on to the next. And there's a reason for that. That way you can really groove in on doing an excellent job on two fronts, technique and effort. But if you have to do things that are really complicated, you spend more mental bandwidth thinking about what my next step is and not as much mental bandwidth on how good my technique is and how hard I'm working, which is really the whole point of being in the gym. This really helps with the sword fighting aspect. Uh, swords are typically very, very heavy. It's very true what uh, Henry's saying. You want ab absolutely the strongest side delts and front delts you can have with sword fighting and rear delts too. The best way to do that would be simple exercises like lateral raises and um, gee, even overhead presses, upright rows, but this is a, you know, fancy, a little too fancy. So this exercise we're performing here is going to be a dumbbell curl alternating from a static hold. Yeah, for the sword work in particular, again, it's what this really helps with is my forearms. Folks, static holds are a gigantic f***ing waste of your time unless you're trying to get good at static holds. If you're trying to build muscle for a Hollywood roll, you're much better off doing dynamic movements, probably with both arms at the same time. You can even alternate them. But the static hold is just a good way to waste energy. If you want to get really good at static holding something heavy, so you're used to holding a sword, it's probably good to just do that by yourself with a heavy dumbbell and take reps at a time of 20 seconds or 30 until you get tired, put it down, wait another 20 seconds, pick it up and do it. That would be better than poisoning a perfectly effective bicep exercise by putting static holds into it. If you have a particularly powerful horse, uh, whether it be a stallion or anything else. Henry Cavill on a horse? Whew, like a romance novel in real life. Good advice for men's health. Pinkies up, try to fight the urge to rock at the waist, lean backwards, very good. All right, everyone, well, that's it. And uh, what we've shown you. I give this a seven out of 10. The detraction points are from the needless complexity and sometimes just downright poor exercise choice with the whole static hold situation. But the way that they did the glute ham raise, the Romanian deadlift, the curls were okay minus the static hold, the lateral raises were fine minus the complexity, indicates to me that there's something going on that's effective and that's very good. That's the first thing. The second thing is Man, Henry Cavill really did explain that everyone is their own person and needs to train on their own time and have their own goals and not compare to others, which I think is really great. And again, it tells me only one thing. Henry Cavill is my dream man. I've been Dr. Mike, and I'll see you guys next time.